Good morning, my Sunday school class. I am so happy to be back with you today. Um, we're going to get started, jump right in. We're going to look at Jesus' first miracle, and that's coming from John, the book of John, second chapter, verses 1 through 11. We're going to do verses 1 through 5, and then we're going to do 6 through 11, okay? In the meantime, I hope you have your Bible, Bible app ready. I have mine here. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, once again, we come to you thanking you for this day, Heavenly Father. Asking again, Heavenly Father, that you open up our minds so that we might understand your word and not only understand it, but live by it. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so that's John, second chapter. We're going to do verses 1 through 11, okay? First, we're going to do 1 through 5, so let us read together 1 through 5. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servant, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Okay? So we see right here that we read that Jesus' mother Mary was at the wedding. Jesus and his disciples was also invited to the wedding. Now let's keep in mind, this was a Jewish wedding. So sometimes back in those days, a Jewish wedding could last for a whole week. Well, we see Mary is telling Jesus that they have no more wine. They had ran out of wine. And uh, Jesus acknowledged and said to her, woman, what do I have to do with this? Well, let me tell you, first thing, he wasn't being rude by saying the word woman. Back in those days, woman was nothing but respect, okay? So that was respect. It ain't like today when we be talking about woman, please, woman, do this. No, no, no. That's how back in the Jewish times that they addressed their mother or a woman, which is, the, which is with the word mom, woman. But see, Mary did that because she knew that if anybody could fix this situation, it would be Jesus. So I believe that some kind of way Jesus went on and helped her out because she did tell the servant, whatever he say do to do it. He wanted his mother to know that the time to show his power and glory will be only revealed according to if the Father's will. So in other words, he wasn't ready to show his miraculous powers as the Messiah and things like that. Jesus, in some way, again, like I said, he must have stepped in and changed his mind to do a little bit. So keep in mind that it's our duty as well to be obedient to whatever Jesus instructs us to do according to his word. We have to be obedient to that, okay? Let's do 6 through 11. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the, the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at the beginning do have set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, them that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. Well, we see that Jesus directed the servants to fill up all six stone jars with water. They filled them up to the brim. Immediately after the jars was filled, Jesus told the servants to draw it out and take it to the governor of the feast or the man that was in charge of the ceremony. After sampling the wine, the governor complimented the bridegroom. 
thou hast kept the good wine until now. The Jewish custom back then was to drink the good wine first and serve the not so good wine as the celebration went on. So we see this is the first miracle of Jesus that was done in a way that only a select few knew. In other words, it was just his mother Mary, his disciples, and the servants knew the power of Jesus and how the water was turned into wine. It seems that Jesus was not ready to perform to a large crowd at this time. He wasn't at the wedding trying to show everybody his power and what he was and who he was. But we see that this first miracle showed his power and glory over the natural world. He never left the house. He never left the ceremony. He did that miracle right there. Okay? And at this time, his disciples fully believe that he is the Son of God. So listen, Jesus is happy to provide what we need, but we have to trust his power and wisdom, being wise in all things. We have to trust him and obey him, okay? Wonderful lesson. We see Jesus' first miracle where he turned the water into wine. Very good, very good, okay? We also learned. That he just didn't go out and expose his power to everybody. It wasn't his time yet. His time had not, came, had not come yet for him to get a whole crowd and just show his miraculous powers. Okay. So next week, we're going to be on Jesus walks on water. And that's John, the sixth chapter, verses 15 through 21. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come. We come, Lord God, this day. Thanking you, Heavenly Father, for your Son. Thanking Jesus for his miraculous powers, Heavenly Father. Thank him for coming to save souls like mine, Heavenly Father. Lord God, it's a new year, 2021. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you just come and see about us, Heavenly Father. Let us be able to meet and greet one another in 2021. In other words, Heavenly Father, destroy this virus, if it be in thy holy will. We ask this. We ask a special blessing on our pastor. We ask a special blessing on church doors that are opened up in your name everywhere. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We love you. We ask these things in Jesus' name, and for his sake we pray. Amen. Bye-bye now. See you next week for Jesus Walks on Water. Go ahead and read it in advance. That's John, the sixth chapter. Verses 15 through 21. Happy holidays. Bye-bye. Good morning. Welcome back. And happy new year. Um, we have a beautiful lesson today. Jesus' first miracle. Uh, we have two outlines. Uh, unexpected need and unexpected solution. All right. We're going to start off with a word of prayer and get right into this lesson. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. If you have made it, we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for this year, this new year. We ask you right now to just bless us right now, Father, that we get something out of this lesson, open our minds, hearts, that we may receive it and, and know that you are God, and God Almighty, and we can do all things through you that strengthens us. Father, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. All right. So... We're going to read John, the second chapter, verses one through five. OK, um, so where we at right now, we have five disciples right now with Jesus. We have Nathaniel. We have uh, Andrew. We have Philip. Um, and we have um, John, and Peter, Simon, Simon, Peter. So we have about five uh, disciples that's coming along with Jesus. And they've been invited to this uh, wedding, this marriage. And let's see what's going to take place in, these le in this lesson. John, the second chapter, verses 1 through 5. And the third day there was a marriage in Canaan of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he say unto you, 
do it. Okay. So here we have Jesus and the disciples has been invited to a marriage. Um, and his mother is there also been invited. Now we don't know um, if the mother is, you know, the wedding planner, um, if she, she's a friends of the family or um, friends with the, you know, relatives to the, um, the bride and groom. But nonetheless, they've been invited. Something to be said about knowing Jesus. It's good to know him. It's good to know him and also not just know him, but invite him. We can solve many problems in life if we invite Jesus into our life, into our homes, into our churches, into our hearts, into our minds, and into our souls. If we invite Jesus in, into our lives, it will solve a lot of these problems we have every day. We need to invite him in. He says, I stand at the door knocking. But he's not going to just come on in. We got to open the door and let him in. Let him into our lives. So it was, I give uh, credit to the family that was hosting this wedding and, and invited Jesus because they don't know what exactly was going to take place down the road. All right. So um, it's good to have them around. So we, we look at this and we see here that they ran out of wine. This marriage, this wedding was a high class wedding. Uh, it's people, a lot of people there um, from all over coming to see this wedding. It was customary that, you know, um, you know, you had wine. You didn't want to run out of food and wine. It's just not a good look. It's embarrassing. It's, 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 you know, the worst thing in the world that could ever happen. Especially if you have a family that's half money and rich and, you know, that's the last thing you want to do is <laughs> run out of food and you have all had this money, you know, you know, guests can come and say, wait a minute now, they didn't run out of food? I mean, uh, I, I come here to, 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 to eat. I'm hungry. You know, I have, you know, um, then they also, it's customary to have wine as a beverage with your meals, uh, with the Jewish community. So, um, water wasn't just good enough because water could be purified, but this, this wine here is, is, is what they normally have. So this is a major, major thing that has taken place, a tragedy, if you will. So, Mary, to give her credit, she went to her son. The one she knew that can solve this problem. She believed in her heart to go to him. She ain't going to no one else. She's going to him to let him know what the issue is, 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 is what, what, what issue is this came up. And he says that, woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. Meaning because it wasn't time for him, he felt that, for people to be, to be revealed who he is. Uh, it's not time just quite yet. But it's something about when a mother asks her son to do something. And even though you don't want to do it because mama asks, I have to do it. It's a special bond there with a the mother and a son. And it's something about when mama come to you, you just can't say no. <laughs> You just can't say no. So, um, so she put it in, in, in Jesus' hands, her son's hands, and she said what, to her servants, whatsoever he say unto you, do it. Don't ask no questions. Just obey what he says. This is going to help us through this situation here. All right. So let's go on and read the unexpected solution that's taking place here. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three furcuses apiece. 
And Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto thee, the bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bared it. And the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was. But the servants which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and said unto him, Every man at the beginning do set forth good wine. When the men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. The beginning of miracles did Jesus in Canaan of Galilee, and manifest forth his glory, and his disciples believed it on him. All right, this is this is excellent here. This is an unexpected solution um, to this this problem. And when Jesus was talking to Mary, and he he he, he told her, he said, "Woman, just want to let you know." Before we get back into this outline, is don't think he was being disrespectful to his mom, to his mother. That was customary for them to call their mother um, woman, um, women in general. It's it was more of a, a genuine endearment. Um, it was more of a you know showing uh, tender care. If we can go back. You know, and look, actually, actually, fast forward. If we can go back to, uh, fast forward to when Jesus was on the cross, John, the 19th chapter, verses 26 and 27. It says, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, woman, behold thy son. Then said to the disciples, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her unto his own home, which was John. So just to let you know that he wasn't being disrespectful to his, his mother, but Jesus gave instructions and the servants did exactly what Mary told him to do. Follow whatever he says. Let Jesus lead you class. If you follow him, things will turn out really smoothly. And it took six water pots. And when you add them all up, it's about two or three gallons per pot. So there's a lot there um, that we've we, we seen. Probably add up to about 180 gallons of wine. So it was plenty of wine so they would not run out. They told him to fill them up, uh, up to the brim using water. It's interesting that God, Jesus used water because throughout the Bible, you see a lot of things that he would do that was, he would use water. You know, you saw God had used water for the earth. He used water to flood the earth during Noah's time. He used water to, uh, in Jordan River to have Jesus baptized. He used water to Drown the Egyptians and Pharaoh uh, to deliver his people. Now we're using water for Jesus' first miracle at this wedding. And it's special because we know that the first miracle wasn't just by accident, I think, for the wedding. Because it reminds you of the church and Jesus being the groom and the church being the bride. And it's, so it's very special that all this is taking place at a wedding for his first miracle. And um, Jesus had to fill him up. And the, the wine was excellent. So excellent that the ruler of the feast, the governor, tasted the wine and was wondering why did they say the best for last. Usually what they would do, they would just, uh, your taste buzz at the beginning is pretty strong. So you, you drink the wine and you bring the, the good stuff first. And then as the taste buds, taste buds would die down, then you start bringing the cheap wine. And um, the ruler was asking of the feast, why would you say this the best for last? So that tells you 
that anything God does, Jesus does, is the best. It's the best. And he will give you the best of everything. And he will give you abundantly of blessings. Not just some, but enough for you that you never have to run out. When Jesus takes care of you, he takes care of you. And he said, um, after all of this was taking place, disciples saw this miracle and they believed on them. They believed on them. And um, everyone was happy, having a good time because of what, what this miracle did for the people. But it only would have been solved. It only was solved because of Mary. Because she went to Jesus. She knew the source of who would take care of it. She knew what, if I can get it and put it in his hands, and she never looked back. She walked away from, from the situation. She knew that it would be taken care of. Class, we, we have to learn to take all our burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Once you take it to him and trust and believe that he's taken care of, you have not to worry about anything. Christ took care of this wedding for his mother and for his friends or relatives at this wedding. And everyone was happy. That's what happens when we do that. We, when we take our burdens to the Lord, when we take our situations, we go to him in prayer, he will solve it for us. So this is a good lesson here. And we're learning that all we have to do is trust him. Obey him. Know that he will take care of us and leave it there. Leave it there. Jesus' first miracle, an unexpected need and an unexpected solution. Next week, we will see that we have another lesson for you that Deaconess West will bring to you. Jesus walk on water. All right. So, um, great lesson. And uh, if you have any questions, you can email me at zhdavis3 at gmail.com. All right. Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Father, we love you and we can't get along without you. We ask you right now to bless us. Bless us right now, Savior. Those that need you, those that that struggling right now through these tough times, please help us through this day, help us through this week, this month, this year. Father, all we want to do is just bless you right now for bringing us out this past year. And we know that we just trust you and put everything in your hands. Everything will be all right. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Class, have a good week. God bless you. Love you.